You can still get your life back. Get your life back. It's real. Get your life back. Get your life back. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in with me. I just got some really, really quick I want to talk about as it come upon my spirit. And let's see, this is what happens when you're a preacher or a speaker, because you always get a message out of something, some interaction, some event, uh, some conversation, and you just, your mind just like, wow, that'd be a great message. Or wow, that'll preach. And that's exactly what happened to me today. <laughs> but for those of you who don't know me, my name is Cheryl Howard. I am an inspiration and transformation speaker. I am also a preacher, a pastoral counselor, a best-selling author, a mental health professional. And I think I said pastoral counselor <laughs> and a mom. But anyway, um, that's all of the things that I do. If you want to know more about me and know more about my programs and if you want to book me as a speaker or do some workshops on empowerment, go to SherylWhiteHoward.com. That is www.SherylWhiteHoward.com. Okay, so today's topic. <laughs> um, I'm going to call this, well, let's, you, by the time you hear this, you will see the title, Following Your First Mind. I don't know why we don't do that sometimes, but I thought about that. And, and the spiritual side is uh, being allowing God to lead you, following the leading of God. So this one is more spiritual today. OK, this is I, today I'm going to put on my preacher's hat um, because I got a message out of an experience that I had today and I wanted to share. So I'm glad you're here. Um, cause this may bless somebody, you know, so I want you to follow me because I am going somewhere and I hope that it touches your spirit. I hope it brings transformation and I hope it's like a new strategy you get out of this that you can use for your life to apply because this message will really help a lot of us who find ourselves in the endless cycle of not trusting either the voice of God or that first intuition or impression that we get in our spirit about a person, place or thing. And I, I think about my mom when she used to always say, and she's still here, thank God, but she used to always say, follow your first mind because it's usually the right thing to do or the right feeling or the right gut feeling you get about a person, place or thing. And a lot of times we don't follow that. And so for those of you who always says to yourself, why do I always do that? Why don't I ever listen to my first mind? I knew that wasn't right for me. I knew that was a bad um, opportunity. I knew that was the wrong person for me. I knew I shouldn't have went to this place. Like why we don't listen to that? <laughs> We're human. We have curiosity. Or we don't always know the ending. And we don't always take a moment to pray and think about a thing. Or, you know, process it with God. Consult God about it. Or the Holy Spirit and go, mm, you think this is so because of all of those things that we don't do all of the time, we find ourselves in a situation, in a relationship or whatever it is in a predicament in an e at an event that it really just it, you feel unease, discomfort, disappointed in your spirit because you didn't follow your first gut instinct. What is that? spirit. Okay. Not going to go there right now, but anyway, so I thought about that today. So I had a meeting this morning and it was to maybe partner with a company as a contractor, right? To do some counseling work, to do some coaching skill, some life skill coaching. And uh, uh, when I pulled up, I noticed that I had been there before and I was like, I came, but I couldn't remember what happened? I couldn't remember if I had another offer from another place, maybe because the salary was better or I just, I don't even remember guys. But so because I'm a considerate person and I know that it takes a certain amount of prep when you want to, you meeting with someone, you having an interview with someone, I'm considerate of people's time. I did sit there and contemplate initially if I should just call and go, you know, no, thank you. Thanks again for, you know, considering me, uh, working with me, but I think I'm going to pass on this, um, opportunity. But I said, let me just go through, you know, why I wanted to go through with it? Because sometimes I'm going to get there too a little bit, but I can go there right now. Actually, sometimes in life we get tested or sometimes we can have an initial interaction with somebody or, um, 
situation and maybe at that time it wasn't the best um, step that you should take. But sometimes down the line, you can have a encounter with the person again a second time or uh, a situation or a place. And, and then at that moment, it can be the right time. Some people that happen in relationships where you've met somebody, great person, but it wasn't the right timing. Maybe there had to been, be some more development or some changes in experiences to take place in order for you to um, come together with the individual or partner with a company or a, a person or whatever. And so you have to keep that in the back of your mind. So it's not necessarily, necessarily a, a loss or um, yeah, it's unsuccessful. It just wasn't the right time. So I said, well, let me give this a chance. So I went inside, I went through the process, but what I noticed in the midst of the meeting, I kind of rushed through it because I felt, and I'm trying to follow my first mind. I felt in my spirit, this is not right for me. This is not, I didn't see myself connected. If you understand what I'm saying with this company. So I said, I already knew I already knew that I was not going to go just follow the next step, which was to do the whole paperwork application process and everything after the interview. Um, but I went through it and I kind of rushed through it. And it's so interesting. Um, if you're a person like me who, who pays attention to people's behavior, um, body language, of course, I'm that's what I do naturally. And I was trained to do it even more, <laughs> you know, doing the things that I do. Um I saw that I influenced their responses by my responses, but it was okay because I had a sense of peace in my spirit that I'm not going to be here and it's okay. So I went through the, I went through the motions, right? Because that's what a lot of us do when we find ourselves in those situations. We go through the motions. We're still respectful because again, you never know where this is leading as well. And so I left there, I sat in the car and said, hmm, very interesting, but I didn't feel bad about it in terms of like, I missed out on a wonderful opportunity. I felt like, I felt like an okay in my spirit. I got a check. I felt an amen. <laughs> like I had an amen section in my spirit that was saying, this is good. It's, it's okay. It's not where you're supposed to be. And that's why you felt what you felt. So in this situation, I am following my first mind because I'm not going to go through with the next step that I would have to take in order to come back and seal the deal or whatever. So I'm good with that. But as I said before, um, I'm always getting a message out of something. And I thought about how sometimes we don't follow that first feeling that we get, you know, we want to go head on and say, well, let me see how it's going to be. And that's how some of us get in trouble. Some of you are dead devils out there. Yeah, I'm a devil dog. You know, you just go ahead and do the darn thing, not knowing or even having a feeling like this may not be the best thing, but I, I just got to go through with it anyway. Sometime, some people get me. This is the trauma. This is the dysfunction some people operate in. They're so used to doing the dysfunctional thing or the thing that doesn't work for them. Um, that they always find themselves in that type of cycle. It's like they're prone to going through the hardship of unnecessary um, pains because that's all they know. They don't have, sometimes you, you don't feel empowered enough or you don't trust God enough in the process to maybe wait or that he has something greater for you you're used to going through the dysfunction. You only know about fighting. You understand? You only know about trauma. You're used to it. You're familiar with it. And so you put yourself through unnecessary punishment. I know I'm talking to somebody today. You put yourself through unnecessary punishment because that's all you know. You don't know about the calm. All you know is about the storm. You don't know how to wait, how to be patient, how to pray, how to meditate, how to seek God, how to allow his leading because it's uncomfortable for you. You're uncomfortable with having peace. You're uncomfortable with trust because you always dealt with distrust. And so you self-sabotage things because it's all you know what to do. And so I'm trying to help somebody today to break the cycle. And if you have been following me, you know that I'm about breaking cycles to help you propel 
into your purpose. So you won't keep doing this to yourself. You won't keep self-sabotaging your blessings. You learn to trust God's voice. You learn to trust that instinct, that first following and leading and feeling. And so maybe you have to learn to trust yourself, but maybe you can't because you always make poor decisions. We all make poor decisions sometimes, but some of us out there always make poor decisions. And so we have to retrain our mind, retrain our spirit. You know, maybe you're around the wrong type of people. Maybe you're in the wrong environment. And I pray that you can change that so you can have a different experience to be around people who usually make the right decisions and the right choices. They already learn how to follow that first. And it's because you grow in that as well. So even in our human development, we will make poor choices and mistakes and we will continue to, but in our development, we learn, especially if you have a relationship with God and you grow in God, you learn to trust him more and more because sometimes we have to go through these type of experiences where we don't follow through or follow that first mind or follow God's voice to learn a lesson and it'll help us in our future. Like I'm not going to make that mistake again this time, whatever I felt the first time I'm going to go by that. That's something we learn to do. And even with God, we learn to trust him more and more when we can look back and see, whoo, I dodged that bullet. I, I did it before, but mm, I'm not going to put myself through that again. This time I'm going to follow God's leading. I may not know all the answers that may be, even feel uncomfortable for a moment. Cause sometimes it feels uncomfortable to wait on trust God, like the children of Israel in the, the wilderness. I'm not going to go into that message right now, but they were so familiar and used to being enslaved because it was a predictable, they know how they day. It was like a caste system that they lived and they, they knew exactly what was going to happen throughout the day. They, in their mind for a moment, they felt like it would have been better if Moses would have left us um, in Egypt because at least in that situation, we kind of knew what was going to happen. But to have God take you out of a, a, a um, comfortable place, okay, and now you're out in an unfamiliar terrain or territory or experience or environment, and because you don't know what's going to happen uh, in the next couple of seconds or minute or days, you start to murmur and complain and because you don't understand. And then you have a distrust issue with God and you start telling yourself lies that, um, it would have been better for me to stay in the place where I was a slave, where I was, um, oppressed. And so you trick yourself into thinking that that was better. Um, not under, because you don't know what's going to happen in the future. And so you keep, self-sabotaging the process, the growth. When God has something greater, he has a promise for you at the end, the land of the Canaan, the land of milk and honey, the promises, because the promises of God are yes and amen. But because you're not used to that, um, you end up going back and you end up making the same mistake over and over and over again. So I'm trying to help somebody break that cycle of doing that. So you, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You really do. You need a mind transformation. You need a spirit transformation. And that, and when you've gone through that, you'll find yourself, um, engaging in better relationships, have better opportunities, and you get to see the great things that God even possess you with because you will grow and you'll find out exactly who you are. You'll be able to identify the greatness in you, but you can't do that when you're always following the, the, the negative or the core beliefs that you battle with inside. So I want you to trust God today, trust his leading, um, and follow that first mind that you get, because I believe is 99, if not 100% of the time, the right feeling, the right decision, the right thought, the right impression. <laughs> and so I thank God for my mother who told me and taught me that to follow that first mind because you know they have my parents have their experiences. So they're trying to pass on some wisdom to us. And so I'm hoping I'm passing on some wisdom to you to follow your first mind. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to this podcast. Share it with somebody who you know. You know somebody right now who needs to hear this message. And sometimes it's hard for people to receive from you because you're familiar to them. They know you. You know you have an emotional attachment. And so it's uncomfortable for them to receive from you or for you to kind of correct and tell them things and help them. So sometimes we hear better from strangers uh, in a neutral relationship where there's no emotional attachment for some reason. That's the way we build sometimes. And so they may not. So don't um, be too hard on yourself and, and say, I've been trying to tell you this for years. Okay. But you listen to Cheryl and you get it. At the end of the day, it's important that you get the message. <laughs> Because I've experienced that as well. Something I've been trying to maybe minister to a person or, or some message or some wisdom. I've been sharing with a person for years or for a while. And it's like, ah, they just seem like they don't listen. And then a stranger comes along or maybe somebody who's well-known and popular, you know, they're taken from them. And so that's a whole nother message. I think I even talked about that. Sometimes how people value they don't sometimes value those they're close to connected with, or maybe sometimes they hold some kind of judgment against you or whatever, because they know you and they know your mistakes and your flaws. And so that's people that's really holding, un- see, I can get deep, holding unforgiveness, or they got something against you, or they're judging you, or they're condemning you when God doesn't do that. We can make mistakes, move up. God, I confess, I'm sorry, move on. He forget all of that stuff. And and it doesn't change anything that he has in store for you. It doesn't change his purpose in life for you at all. But we as people sometimes hold on to that thing. So sometimes they can't receive from you. It's, you know, they so busy looking at, oh, but you ain't do this and you ain't. It's okay. Don't take it personal. That's just, that's just how we are sometimes. (laughs) But anyway, I thank you again for tuning in. I hope this was a blessing to somebody. And I hope you listen to my future broadcast. Thank you for tuning in. Cheryl Howitz, get your life back. Blessings.